the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Thank you for joining us. Well, you're welcome. It's uh, it's my Not, job. No, oh. no, no. I mean, I guess so. Okay, I well, guess I'm glad you're I joining think he was us. Talking things. to me. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Here we are again, September 18th, another episode of the show. Jason is in a burgundy V-neck T-shirt, a Stark contrast from the pitch black routine. Still in my dark, uh, hide them boobies colors, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> that's that's the goal here. Oh man, era, oh, Jason. Man. Era, yeah. thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, the HTB era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 People, HTB. People tune in for the for the realness. <laughs> is that and the, we give it to is them? Is that what they need? Um, yeah. So I don't know how to transition naturally out. <laughs> Out of that one, um, but I don't think it's, it's into. Gonna be a great show. I don't think it's into hungry for more. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, we got news to talk about. We have unsolved mysteries on today's episode, which is a look at the top three most uh, difficult to decipher situations in fantasy football through two weeks. We asked the Foot Clan and uh, what your biggest questions are, concerns, beliefs, or disbeliefs, and these were the the top most frequent responses. We also have big news, very exciting news. Very thankful we get to share it, but the current Megalobowl leader is not the Falcon. Oh, thank goodness. Man, that's great. How'd you do this week, Falcon? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. You did okay? What's your record? I'm 4-0. Okay, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm in there. I'm four and zero right now. You're just not number one anymore. I'm just not. Yeah, the number, number one, 12. Uh, number twelve. That's still oh, pretty. Yeah, good. that's pretty nice. <laughs> Brees cups number uh, one. I, Breesy. Yeah, is it like oh. Breesy cups? I think oh. is what they're going for okay. here. I hope All that right. does not insinuate that they have had no. the Cooper Cup. Okay, uh, because they will not be number one next week if that is the case. The Cooper Cup injury is devastating for. Wait. Is number two so many of my teams? Number two, their name is it's all one word, Camel Case. Saints fan against Allen. Yeah. But nice. two question marks. Well, at this point they've been, maybe they added the question maybe, marks because okay. things have been going good. For two wins. And uh, for every win oh, they every will win add a question add, mark. Yeah. Until I shave my head. <laughs> it's coming. Right. It's we coming. Get, we gotta get a thermometer on this wall. Oh, to to count the Yeah. Every time the Saints win, we put another You know what? Another, another red. piece. Go to go to Jason's full camera here. I just want to. Yeah, we got room. Oh yeah, we got room. We're gonna put a Saints logo uh, right back <laughs> behind your left shoulder. Every win, a little Saints logo is going on the wall. Another one. It'll be like one of those Ohio State helmets. Yeah, where they do a good thing. Yeah, we're gonna get that head, um, nice and shaped. <laughs> uh, what else do we have to talk about? The weekly rankings up on the website. You can go check them out. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Tons of great articles. It's always uh, – I always want to shout out our writing staff and the incredible work that yeah. they're doing. If you want fantasy football content, articles to read and, and things to think about, you can get that on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can also get it on our in-season app, which is free. So if you go to the App Store on Android or Apple and just search for the Fantasy Footballers and download our in-season app, that is – completely free the start sit tool is in there and we're going to be adding all of the foot clan uh tools to that app here over the first half of this season at some point as well for everybody that's supporting this show over at jointhefoot.com so um i always can there's kind of an undercurrent that happens here in the studio when i am like talking and, and trying to carry the show along and then i notice the just the the void in, it, it, we're not in waivers just yet. That, vo- was, that was no, a news check. No, I not for this guy. Oh, this you're guy on waiver check already? Yeah, I'm on waiver check. Jason's already <laughs> I refreshing, think you got like four minutes. refreshing the waivers. Um, I got an alert, but it was a different league. 
Well, look, let's just uh, let's just come clean about the waivers that are about to go through in our league of record. We had a waiver show yesterday. Yeah, what what are we hoping for? I I mean, there's I'd nothing you can not do share. at this point. I would like to know what you spent <laughs> and how much you spent. Like your highest waiver claim, fab wise, and how much? My highest waiver claim was Gus Edwards, and it was only ten dollars. So I I expect to not receive pretty much any of my. I claims can promise you, you won't receive Gus because I bid about twenty two dollars wow. on Gus. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, and and so Mike, what about your? Like I said, I'd rather. Not <laughs> we're not changing it. And those deucers back there, they've got work to do on this show. They're not. I think changing he's just anything. embarrassed. Oh, I am very embarrassed. Was this like, Are you in need? Uh, uh, have you heard about my League of Records team? Have you heard what's happened over here? It's a disaster. Um, no, I've I've had to go. Uh, what what I think is is pretty hard in the paint after. Derek Carr. <laughs> Oh, 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 yes. Oh, that is so good. Yes. I'm in the car. I'm in the car. <laughs> I want to point and laugh so, at you. Uh, I had, and for the, like, why is that happened to me? Well, Jordan Love was my draft pick. Um, I would like to put him on my IR, except my medical unit is full to the brim of Jonathan Brooks. Your IR is already full. Yeah, Christian Brooks, or uh, Christian Brooks, Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> Jonathan Brooks are just. They're going to be there for a while, just oh, you know, man. hanging out, recovering. Last week it was Stafford was going to be my streaming option, and then his offense has completely imploded. So I'm I'm having to make some moves. Meanwhile, the I I don't know what the team with Tua is going to do because Derek Carr is currently the he would be the go to guy off of our waiver wire. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, people asking Derek Carr questions right now, so. Um, Lots to talk about. We'll let you know. I, I just noticed these guys get distracted a couple minutes in. Sometimes we've, in the past, we've, yeah, I'll, I'll be tuning out here in about two minutes. We've waited <laughs> to start the show, but it's also entertaining to watch you guys freak out over the waiver wire. So we'll see. Uh, you guys give, give yeah, me that. My team's healthy and good. I'm Andy. <laughs> I thought you Things were the are going, reaper. Things are going really, really well. No, I reaped both of you. Yeah, yeah. you did. You guys are both completely. Yeah, I've ooh. absorbed your powers. Um. Yeah. Yeah. This is going really good today. <laughs> Check out the Dynasty podcast if you are um, interested in that sort of thing. We have a new Dynasty podcast up, and now I can be hungry for more. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Well, Mike, you said you spent up on Derek Carr. Now, I want to know how much you bid. We'll find out uh, in a moment. My Hungry for More this week is Derek Carr and the Saints offense. Oh, thank goodness. So, um, you know, everything that they're doing top to bottom, in New Orleans right now is perfect. Uh, Pressure-wise, Derek Carr, only Aaron Rodgers has seen fewer pressures through two weeks in the NFL. Um, and they just played Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys, and they one on one him a lot. Like, it, it was very impressive. Well, there's a lot of motion. There's a lot of misdirection. There's a lot of utilization of the running game. A lot of play action. It, there's a lot of uh, shanahan -y stuff going on in the running game. Derek Carr right now is averaging 11.4 yards per attempt. He was basically dead last in that category last season. This season, he's number one. He leads all quarterbacks in fantasy points per drop back, uh, and they've only thrown the ball 43 times. So it's been efficiency. It's been play action. It's been big plays. It's been screen game. And right now, they're favored. They're favored to beat the Eagles this week, and that is who I am taking. I think they will beat the Eagles this week. The Eagles – Defense is too challenged for me right now. So um, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I'm hungry no. for more Derek Carr, Rashid Shahid. I think it's the week Olave takes off, and more Alvin Kamara. I mean, this is this is uh, yeah. I mean, if, Saints alive. When you eat a delicious meal, you are always going to be hungry for more of that. And the Saints have been outstanding. I mean, um, you know, I I got backed into in our listener league. I, my my yeah, team name did. is the Saints because I ended up with a good value on Camara, a good value on Alave. Had had to stack them with Derek Carr, and uh, I'm off to a good start. So yeah, I think we're I think we're hungry for more Derek Carr and the Saints offense. Keep keep going, keep going, Dennis yeah, Allen. Yeah, it seems borderline impossible for. It, I mean, 
it is impossible what they've done the first two games for that to be an entire season's worth. It's just the the hope and dream that maybe they're just a, maybe the offense has figured something out. Baby cubes, yep, uh, getting it done. My hungry for more this week makes a lot of sense. We finally saw the tasty dish. We are Cardinals fans. I am hungry for more Marvin Harrison. I'm never going back to the pants store. Marvin Harrison Jr. was incredible. Um, and what was crazy is he he basically had one quarter of action. He had four for 131 and two in the first quarter. He was the wide receiver one on the week. Absolutely outstanding. They used him across the field. They they had scramble drills that connected uh, the deep end zone. And then my favorite part, and this is what I'm really hungry for more of, there were two different plays where they were in the red zone and they had one-on-one -on -one coverage like near the goal line with Marv. Both of those, they kind of threw the back shoulder fade, which a lot of times that is a stupid play to run. But when you have a Devontae Adams – and an Aaron Rodgers, you run that thing like crazy, and it works almost every time. When you've got a, you know, the the, the Cooper Cup Stafford, when you get that connection in the red zone, you, that play becomes what feels like a seventy five percent chance at a touchdown if you truly have one on one. And and they missed on both of those opportunities in right. Week One, but it's there, and they're building that chemistry. And I'm really hungry for more of that specifically. Throw it to him one on one, that back shoulder fade. Keep doing it for years until it becomes perfected. I'm going with uh, – we'll get to the waiver report here because it just ran through. But mine, it, Hungry for More, it's Tony Pollard from the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I'm all about that, man. The This week especially. Uh, it's interesting of the coaches over the offseason where, hey, we got 1A, 1B. We got a 50-50. We got two starters on this roster. Week one happens. Tony Pollard is the dude, the dude. Going to a press conference after that, hey, we're going to get Tajay Spears a little bit more involved, and we go into the next week. Guess who's still the dude? Tony Pollard, because I, in my opinion, he is just that much better than Tajay Spears. It's not that Spears is a bad player. I think Tony Pollard is excellent. This is the Tony Pollard that we hoped we were going to get last year. Unfortunately, his recovery from his ankle injury he just it it took a really really long time to get there for him. It wasn't until I think like week, a double digit week of last year when he said, "I finally feel healthy," and that's when his rushing grades really started to prove improve over on PFF. But here is the list of NFL running backs who have seen fifteen or more carries and four targets in each of uh, the first two games. Okay, ready, guys? Tony Pollard. Mm -hmm. End of list. This this is sensational, and onto, like, he's been excellent. He's his matchup against Green Bay. They are a they've been a run funnel offense, even though the Colts were weird and they took Jonathan Taylor off of the field for the whole fourth quarter. That was a highly suspect decision that they made. But Tony Pollard is a good player. We keep hearing good things about him, and we keep hearing the coach being really mad at his quarterback. Well, that that was my point is that. One of the reasons I love Tony Pollard moving forward, I loved him before this season because I thought he would win the like hold the job over Spears. Now Spears is even banged up, but it's the fact that guess what? Will Levis cannot close his eyes and throw the ball over the back of his head when it's in Tony Pollard's hands. Like if their defense is as good as I think it is, which with Snead and the pick that they made in strengthening the interior of the line, like they have, I think they're the best defense statistically this year. Number one. But they've lost both their games, and that's because of mistakes on the offensive yes, side. Put the is. ball in Tony Pollard's hands, throw him some like high probability targets, and let him go because he seems like he is. I mean, two top twenty-four weeks. You're, yeah, I love it. I'm hungry for more Tony Pollard too, Mike. If you're willing to share, oh, you're gonna all eat are that? welcome. All are welcome at the table. You're gonna <laughs> eat. That. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was hungry for more. Presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats. Official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL order now. So we have the waivers. They have ran. Andy. Yeah, I, 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 everything was perfect. Everything, I, I, it was perfect. Oh, you're, you're happy with I'm it. I'm so happy. So you, yeah. Gus, I had an empty bench, by the way. 100% empty. I, I did see you cleared house. Uh, that's another part of my problem is my bench is just 
it's full of a lot of players. Full of that, dead guys. <laughs> it's, it's full of players that I just I if I drop them, they'll get picked up right away. But I need people to play, so I'm in a really tough situation. But Andy, you got Carson Steele for twenty eight bucks. You went hard in the paint. I did move that one up. That was the one I could have survived. I had him at twenty two. But I realized with Joe Mixon's injury that I might need a sure. very important start this week. And also, Jason made the point on the show yesterday as we were teasing out all of the different options in Kansas City, what happened is, is Kareem Hunt signed later in the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take him some time to onboard. Yes. And the team has spoken so highly of Carson Steele. And t t what Jason said was, look, if there's a chance for one of these two guys, Carson Steele, Samaj P. Ryan, to be a surprise special option on your team, it's Carson Steele. I went back. He had watched the film. I went back and watched the film. I do think they're going to give Carson Steele a real opportunity to begin these next couple of weeks, and I wanted my opportunity there. It's an eight-week time period that we're all booking Pacheco to be out. So if it works out with Carson Steele, if he comes out and, look, Kareem Hunt could not outperform Jerome Ford last year, right? Or even Pierre Strong at certain points of the season. Samaj P. Ryan was cut this offseason season. He's a he's a player that I think he has a role. Like if Carson Steele struggles, Samaj P. Ryan could be everything for this offense. So that was an opportunity. I just drew my line in the sand on Steele. I wanted him on the team, and then I spent on Gus Edwards because yep. the carry counts are, you know, insurance running back. Never doubt your need in fantasy for more and more sure. and more running backs on your roster. To me, there's no plan for this team. Jim uh, Harbaugh does not look at the running back position squarely through yards per carry. It's about what you offer the team, breaking down a defense. Can you be somebody I trust with the football? So I think Edwards' role as a startable asset is going to be there all year. Yeah, that that's why I had him as my highest bid because even though he does not have the ceiling that, that Carson Steele has if, if Steele hits, uh, it's still like I know that until Gus Edwards gets injured, he's getting 15 carries a game every single week. He's going to have plenty of goal line opportunities. His involvement is is very, very high. He was 22. Next bids were 18, 17, 15, and 12. He was highly um, sought after. Now, apparently, Mike, Al Borland, apparently Al Borland had the chance, he says, that he <laughs> could have, <laughs> like, you, you know – had a lack of integrity and tried to outbid me based on me disclosing this. I was curious if it would let me change it at, at that time. So I did up my bid from 17 to 18, knowing that still wouldn't so, outbid you. And so it you, did, it did go through. So you really, you have like partial integrity because if 17 to 18 had won you him, well, you had already told you me your bid. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's fair. That's a fair point. And Mike uh, did pure get, integrity. I, I'm, that's what I I'm disappointed here, Mike. When you were embarrassed, I thought you went hard after Derek Carr. You, you spent 16. That seems perfectly reasonable for he's your needs. He's Derek Carr. And you mean the quarterback two good, on the season? That's a good point, he's, though. He's he Derek, is Derek Carr. He's Derek Carr, and that is 16% of my season budget for Derek Carr. Yeah, and he is likely. What, do you believe he'll pumpkin? Because I think he'll pumpkin. I think so. But this week? No, no not, not this week. Yeah, I didn't. No, not, not this week, week but this, this, all of the bid was this week. I need some magic. Andy, having watched Carson Steele, uh, you you watch his film. I watch his film. Um, do you agree? You know how uh, announcers will talk about a downhill runner. Huh, yeah, yeah. He looks like he he's is falling, literally yeah. running <laughs> down a hill. Like he's out of he's he's, he's tumbling <laughs> down a hill every single time. If if Pacheco <laughs> is beating the ground up, Carson Steele is being pushed off the top of a hill is, and just see where he lands. He is doing the old man fall and run to try to stop his fall every time he goes. It's unbelievable. But he's a big, strong, young alligator man, so I apologize for comping him to the old man falling. But he, he is. He's he's running, falling down. Alligator man? Yeah, what does that come from? Where's Why, he, why do you call him the alligator man? Carson, isn't, isn't that the guy who has a – he was given a pet alligator as a kid? Oh, and he I grew up with an alligator. He's got like an alligator. His pet is an alligator. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people nodding. I did not deep dive into the childhood of Carson Steele. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to go deep. Outstanding. Now I wish I had bid more, even though I won, <laughs> just for the alligator. Um, all right, we're going to jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Yep. 
Big old alligator. Big fan. Yeah. Big, big fan. Great name, too. Carson Steele. Might be the steal of the week on oh, waivers. Okay. Hmm. Swish. Right. Yeah, you got it. Justin Herbert, he will be listed on the injury report. His status is to be determined, but they I think they expect him to play. I saw positive reports from his head coach. He played through broken ribs. I mean, if he can if he can stand and last throw, year. he'll yes, last, last year. Um I'm just saying he's he's one of these, you know, some guys struggle with injuries more and some guys play through them, whether it's good or bad. You know, uh, Trevor Lawrence maybe should have taken some time last year, but we know he'll be out there if he's injured and he can be out there. Her Herbert is one of those guys, so I expect him to be there. This sucks, but Marshawn Lloyd has been placed on IR with an ankle injury. Dude, man. By the way, they're the, they're the number one team in rushing in the foot, in national – what but are we saying? National Football <laughs> the League. The National Football uh, League. It, it makes sense when Josh Jacobs gets, what was it, like 30 carries or so? Yeah, Malik. when Malik Willis is your quarterback on short notice, you say, all right, guys, come here, huddle up. Here's the plan for this game. You know who number – We're uh, going to run. Number 32 is? Uh, as in fewest rushing attempts? No, fewest rushing yards per game. They're number one. Uh, the Packers are number one in rushing yards per game in the NFL. Okay. Dead last. Who's dead last? Is it the Cowboys? No, it's the Raiders who lost Josh Jacobs. So Jacobs oh. is on the number one offense, and then the team that lost him, they're dead last. The Raiders are also second in pass rate over expectation right now. Like, this is not just a – the Raiders have been in – game scripts where they have to throw which they had to the, I mean this past week was a, a a a massive comeback against the Baltimore Ravens seemingly the whole game but as of right now they're letting Gardner throw it has been interesting that the teams that did invest heavily in free agent running backs seem to be succeeding greatly with them yeah Jacobs Saquon despite the drop he he's Mixon. been great for him Mixon Aaron Jones has been great yeah, and then the teams that decided we we'll just go with what we got. It's not working with Matt. The Madison Zamir White combo is not working. Well, it's not working for Chicago either. They gave a guy a lot of money. That's true. They were the first team to go out and and grab their free agent. They chose back. poorly. They did. Tua Tunga Vailoa on IR as he recovers from his concussion and meets with specialists. Skylar Thompson will start in week three at Seattle for. And for the foreseeable future. It's going to be a long stint. They are not putting any timetable on his recovery, nor should they. I think they're they're dealing with it appropriately. Tua did come out and say he's not looking to retire, so he should be back this season. Hopefully it's a couple months from now. Royce Freeman signed to the Browns practice squad. Not really important. David Njoku. Is, Pierre um, Strong is, is hurt. Which is why uh, Deontay, Deontay Foreman got so much work last yeah. week. David Njoku unlikely to play. Cool. But not likely to be placed in uh, marked O for your yep, IR. That's what I'm saying. Thanks, guys. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries. Well, last year on this episode, we were working through some unsolved mysteries. Uh, Jameer Gibbs' usage was really low at that point in time. We talked about whether it'd get better. It got better. It did. It got a lot we better. We solved that one. Baker Mayfield's redemption tour with Mike Evans. Uh, we wanted to know if it would continue. He was, in many ways, what Dick Derek Carr is right now. Um, oh, do I have last year's? Baker? Maybe. Did I get him? You might. And uh, the Bengals, they were having offensive woes. Oh, hey. Who's having offensive problems? They are this, slow. This is, this is every year, <laughs> they man. They are slow starters. And then Jordan now, Love. Now, it, just real quick, the Bengals, r remind me, do they play in the preseason? Do they play their starters in the preseason? Because I'm thinking maybe they should. I, I, I heard the stat. I have not vetted this. Kyle, you can vet this. But the Joe Burrow is 1-9 and nine in his first two weeks of the season going back. Every year, it like that's try to try to yeah. do a little bit more in training camp. Maybe they just tell the guys that they're regular season games, even when they're the last couple of preseason games. Yeah, maybe. But Jordan Love, we were wondering this time last year if he's the real deal as well. This year, we kind of uh, we put it out there to the Foot Clan. What are the biggest situations that you are 
dealing with? What are the unsolved mysteries of fantasy football after two weeks? Confirmed. One and nine in the first two weeks of each that's, of the seasons. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I want to deal with is will the passing numbers in the NFL come back to form or get better? Because right now the touchdown totals in the NFL are way, way down compared to previous seasons. The passing touchdowns, way, way down. We're talking, you know, at least six, seven years ago. Um, are we going to get some positive regression? There's a lot of too high safety defenses that are just locked in. We're seeing the return of workhorse backs. Like the pendulum is being swung. The defensive philosophies have changed. Uh, you know, there are there's a lot of data we can go through, but just get your reaction to that first thought. Yeah, I think the first thought is it will get better as the season goes along. We have several rookies. We, you know, I, I wanted to bring this up. Um, I I took the week one like we said. What did we get wrong in the in the draft season? And my first thing was like I'm in on Brock Bowers. Like right after one game, it was like. He's great, and I'm always against rookie tight ends. The, it's, we're just making bets on history. The other bet we make often on history is avoiding wide receivers for rookie quarterbacks, and with three rookie quarterbacks starting right now, that is that's that is a little piece of this equation. Currently, J.J. McCarthy is tied for the lead in passing <laughs> touchdowns for rookie quarterbacks. Um, with Caleb, with Jaden, with Bo Nix. With uh, with, Drake May ah, with yeah. not playing. <laughs> exactly. He's there no rookie has thrown a touchdown. Oh, yet. Don't, yeah, Michael Penix. Don't don't forget. Yeah, about nice him. job. Oh tied. yeah, he's tied there. So um th that plays a piece of it. But I do think the defensive schemes that we have seen recently with the with the too high with quarters, it's having an effect. And it's it's really it's shifting it to more running games. Like if that's the look I'm getting, I'm going to run the ball more. I'm going to involve my running backs more. And when you run the ball more, uh, rush rate up equals fewer overall plays per game. That's just how that works. So it's it's having an effect, but it it makes me realize if you look at the middling wide receivers versus the middling running backs, right now I think I think the middling running backs are are much better plays. I'll give you examples here. Um, Brian Robinson and and Austin Eckler and Ramondre Stevenson and Pollard and Charbonnet and these guys who were like you know mid round draft picks they're all involved more than we thought they're all performing mostly on a weekly basis whereas a lot of the wide receivers you know it's it's like the stars are the stars but the the average guys I just feel like teams right now are running the ball more from 2018 through 2022, we were, at this point in the season, up over 100 passing touchdowns. So that's a five-year stretch, 114, 105, 110, 110, 105. This year we're at 66. That is nearly half the total. So if you're feeling it, your opponent is feeling it, and the quarterbacks that you drafted to be high performers, like the fact that Sam Darnold last week was the quarterback four in fantasy, and is the only quarterback with two passing touchdowns in each of the first two weeks, is just gross, unbelievable. Gross is a good word, but like, are you worried about any of these guys? Because there are five quarterbacks that are outside the top fifteen right now that people they drafted, and they're worried. I'm already going to answer one of them, Caleb Williams. You guys said drop him yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't worry about that. We know that they're. The gap between where he's at now and where he needs to go is so far that it's not worth holding. But Dak, Dak was a quarterback 22 and 15, been a slow start. Are you worried about Dak? I'm not worried. Dak, if you remember, last year he was a league winner. But in the first five weeks, he was he was outside the top 15 and was not that good either. So um, I'm not worried. He's too talented. So, uh, by the way, apologies to Derek Carr. It's Derek Carr and Sam Darnold. Oh, Those are the only two. How dare you? How dare you do that to more. my guy, yeah, my, no, my si QB? 16, Baker doesn't? The $16 man over there. Hmm. Um, Joe Burrow. Yeah, Baker was just one yeah. this past week. Huh? He had four in week one. So you can add average. average. <laughs> okay. Joe Burrow. Uh, I'm not worried. No. Again, we talked about it last year and every year. They're slow starters. I think he'll get better, and he's still working his way back from the wrist injury that he says has no effect whatsoever, except it's better every week. Which I'm like, <laughs> he was two sixty and two against Kansas City, 
which was good enough for uh, QB 11 on the week, gets Washington, gets Carolina, Baltimore, Giants. So three of the next four matchups are plus for Joe Burrow. Aaron Rodgers, how yes. often do you think Aaron Rodgers is going to be started in fantasy this year or Not worthy a, of a start? Um, Worthy of a start in hindsight, I think he'll – It'll be probably five five games where it's like he had a good game. Whether or not you're going to choose to start him. I This 2024 version of Nathaniel Hackett and Aaron Rodgers scares me a little bit. Um, they have. I think I've seen two unbelievably perfect drives for, in the two weeks. One, one, each, one each week where it was like, there's, there's Rodgers, there's Wilson. This is the offense we were waiting for. But... Unfortunately, we've had a lot more than two total drives, and most of the other drives, they don't look like they're clicking. I don't know what it is, and maybe they'll get it together. Do you guys think they'll figure it out? I will. So for the Dynasty podcast, we had a, a big section talking about Garrett Wilson. So I went and I was, I watched every you know Wilson snap, which is correlated to Aaron Rodgers. He looks hesitant and rusty. There were at least three plays in that uh in the most recent game the the Jets Tennessee game which Garrett Wilson had a really tough matchup against uh Snead. Snead is that's a takeaway. If you go watch uh the all 22 of the Jets Tennessee, Snead is he's just he's one of those DBs that just he can erase a a wide a really good wide receiver. He's just always there. I feel like last year he was the best. In yeah, my in my it, opinion it was, I think he was the best. Last year was devastating for fantasy football when your number 1 went up against. Him. So that was one takeaway, but another was there was those, like I said, the, the the three plays or so where young Rodgers would have seen it bef as, but like as it was happening and just chucked the ball up and 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 had the belief that his I mean, if he, Devontae Adams, he would have the belief Adams is going to make this play. He's going to beat the DB here. I can see it happening. And if Rodgers, just, he looks rusty, which he hasn't played in over a year and uh, and and he's working with a new crew. I know he's with Hackett again, but he's working with a whole new team. So I think it's going to take some time. Unfortunately for the Jets, Patriots, Denver, Minnesota, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Patriots, Houston. That's the next that's the run here for the Jets. It's going to be really tough for Rodgers and I think for 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 us to see that peak Garrett Wilson uh, uh, there's going to have to be massive improvement. The the 33rd team tweeted this out about Aaron Rodgers and how quick he's getting the ball out and how quick yes. he has over his career because this makes a big difference of whether you're going to allow yourself time to find Garrett Wilson down the field, maybe stretch a pocket longer. If you go back, here's how long his time to throw is by year. 2.79 seconds, 2.79, 2.54, 2.72, 2.78, 2.79, 2.81, 2.82, 2.0. Two point six two, and then this year it's two point three seconds. So he's doing, he's yeah, he is getting the ball out. He's taking the snap and just getting rid of it. That's uh, that jives exactly with what I said on the dynasty show of like he looks like he's not giving the half beat of extra time of letting that play develop, and he's just he's choosing to throw it short instead of waiting that just a fraction of a second for Garrett Wilson to break open. One more player because. Um, I just have a, a, a unfortunate question I have to ask, which is uh, who has more fantasy points this year, Daniel Jones or Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I the love Jags it. are broken. This they they they're one of the worst they're, teams they are. to watch play football right now. Boston, Doug Peterson. This is like the trend. It, yes, it it, it, it really starts is. strong and then you just you just don't figure it out. But I don't know if it's the coaching. I don't know if it's Trevor Lawrence. Like. Daniel Jones gets so much heat. He has uh he has four more fantasy points this year than Trevor Lawrence has. And that's unbelievable. So, you know, Christian Kirk's doing nothing. Evan Ingram is hurt. Brian Thomas is boom bust. Gabe Davis is doing the cardio thing. Like it, it is not good right now. They're so brutal to watch. So I don't know. Do you have any hope for Lawrence recovering this uh, year? Man. I I uh, I only have hope because Brian Thomas Jr. is really really good, and I think if they develop that connection, that'll work. But the turnover worthy throws this last week from Lawrence they were they were really really bad, and I agree with you the you know the coaching staff tends to get figured out. So I'm I mean I've never believed that Trevor Lawrence was this generational talent. I think he is an average NFL quarterback. 
And I, so that's that's that was my belief coming into the year. He did not get paid like an average quarterback. Mm. Uh, number two unsolved mystery is Sam Darnold actually good? Is his his success sustainable? Like I said last week, two sixty eight and two in a victory over the 49ers. I think the improbability of that happening, you know, it's not like he's putting up crazy prolific numbers. He's still making mistakes. He's still taking some sacks. Um, But he ran the ball a little bit. He was doing that in Carolina. I mentioned him and Carr, the only ones with two plus, uh, two pass touch, passing touchdowns. And Jefferson, you know, having Jefferson in and of itself feels like a baseline that he didn't have in previous places. Now the, the a question I have for the Vikings is is how real is the defense? Because right now, it looks legit. I mean, you they held the Giants to six points. They're real. They're and, real. They were great last year. And they held the 49ers to seventeen points this past week. So that that will impact things because it's uh, the game script for Sam Darnold. Like if if they were in competitive, but you know more competitive matchups. I think he puts up even better numbers. Week one, they just you didn't have to do anything, and then week two was a combination of, uh, you know, winning plus Justin Jefferson was lost, and no Jordan Addison in that matchup as well. I think that there is, you should be optimistic on Sam Darnold. Um, he's still Sam. We still have a huge career of, of letdown, so it's not a ready to go all in with Darnold. But he, I think there should be optimism. I. And they're they're tied for third in pass rate over expected, so they're they're still doing the Kevin O'Connell we throw all the time. Yeah, I love the coaching staff, and obviously having a weapon like Justin Jefferson is valuable. Sam Darnold has a great arm; he has the talent, but he still makes stupid decisions. And I do think that as soon as the cookie starts to crumble, I don't think it'll sustain the rest of the year. He's had incredible stretches before back in 2021 he had a week where he had 304 uh passing touchdowns two rushing touchdowns was the quarterback five he follows that up the next week with 301 and two he was he was just it was like oh this is the guy who was you know drafted so high and then the next couple weeks he combines over five weeks for what's like it looks like uh a total of 544 yards. Yeah, sub 200 average. He has no Addison right now. He'll he'll come back. He has no Hawkinson right now. He'll come back. Naylor looks legit. Jalen Naylor, wide receiver. Yes. Um, two touchdowns in two weeks. Jefferson has scored twice in two weeks. The weapons and the offensive system are there. The arm is there for Donald. I mean, everything should work. I just worry about the decision making long term. Well, I think if I think what you were saying it makes some sense. With which is like if the game script flips on them, they've been up in both games. Does his confidence sustain a couple bad plays and? Is it capable of bringing them back? Well, and that's the other thing, Mike. You're saying it, it could be even better if they're in more competitive games. It could be much worse. It could be like, oh, now they know they're throwing the ball. The the thing about this offense is they, you know, they're they're really good schematically. If if I'm up by ten points and Darnold's going to have to drop back, and I can pin my ears back and go get him, you is can this, see real bad stuff. They're underdogs at home this week against Houston. Do you think that this would be the week to really? Yeah, Houston's defense looked great. If yeah, if, I mean, if if they're good this week. Uh, I, I think we got to buy in, but I have to see another one before I, before I really believe. Nick it. Mullins, who is not good, uh, he started five games at the end of the year for the Minnesota Vikings last year. He was a top twelve guy in three of them. That just speaks to the offense and Kevin yep, O'Connell. That's, that's what I'm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, was bullish. this a fantasy take or is this yeah. like? Do we think Sam Darnold is actually? I'm th getting I'm, it together and it's going to be good. I no, think the I'm, implications of him being good extend to so many players on that team and the future of that team that I think that's how I'm taking it. I'm not really looking at Darnold to stream right now. I mean, I guess they're, if he plays well this week, he'll enter that conversation. I think he's going to have a fine. I think he'll have another 250 and two. Did you see Mel Kuyper's rant about the benching of, of um, Bryce Young? No. He was talking about the fact that like. That he hadn't watched Bryce Young? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Well, he was talking about the fact that, I mean, obviously we have now, we have Baker and, and Sam Darnold who have left Carolina. They look terrible in Carolina and they've left Carolina and been not just good, but so far very good. Like Baker for a year and a half and then Sam Darnold to start the year, both out of bad situations in Carolina. 
he was talking about the the stupidity of the structure they put around Bryce Young and the fact that, okay, last year you were supposed to bring in, it was Frank Reich, right? Mm -hmm. But for part of the season. And so it's new offense for Bryce Young, new structure all around him, no receiving weapons. Then in the offseason, they clean house. They're obviously upset about the fact that they didn't draft C.J. Stroud. So they clean house, they bring in a whole new system. So Bryce Young is going to learn a whole new system with new players and try to execute it. And then instead of doing what like Houston did, even this year with C.J. Stroud, where Stroud played two full preseason games, Bryce Young played one drive of one preseason game in the entire preseason with a new system, a new offense, and you're supposed to go in on week one with all of those things and just be great. The difference, I think, uh, to speak more like honestly is, yes, that's all true, but the system doesn't mean that you can complete a pass to that spot. It, when when you're missing passes so egregiously, probably about 30% of your throws are not catchable passes. That has nothing to do with the system. It, he sees the wide receiver, even when he makes the right call and the right read, and he throws it to that guy. Whether it's a screen pass on a design like this is just catch and throw it to him, or whether it's a rollout, and I mean just over and over and over and over and over, not being able to allow the play to have any chance to work. That's where that's where you know you, you saw the head coach come out and say, after watching the film, like I I owe it to every player on this team, yes. every coach on this team, um, to to put the best players on the field. And the thing is, is like Andy, everything you just said is even more true of Andy Dalton. And we'll see if Andy Dalton comes out and looks just as bad or if he's better. And I think we all know he's going to be better. Do you, do you think that Bryce Young, though, like from a f functional standpoint, this is a player that had a thousand like attempts as a collegiate athlete. Maybe it was a system that really, really made it work for him being undersized. But like for a 66% collegiate passer to lose it all, it just has to be more than physical. It has oh, to yeah. be, it has to be the mental side. And I think that's the point that I'm I'm not really trying to defend the move. Like I yesterday I was defending Canales for making the move for Dalton and I still am in that camp. You have to do it now. I'm just saying like if you made me a list of like things to do to help a young quarterback gain their confidence, playing in the preseason to learn stuff seems like something that you might want to have them do. Like you might want to give them the opportunity in a brand new system to play a down or two in the preseason. It just seems like the, that the Panthers are repeating the bad decision-making on every level for multiple years at a time, and we've seen players come out of it and be successful now in Baker Mayfield, who I think we were all willing to say was 100% toast, done, oh, yeah. career over, finished. You're, you're, you're nothing. And then the same thing with Sam Darnold. Um, so it's just an interesting thing to observe because – I just don't know how much time you gave him to build confidence or did things to help him build confidence. I am I am in agreement with both sides here of I think you have <laughs> No, 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 no. I no, didn't listen. know there were two sides. Because but what Jason what, did call me a liar cuz he saying, said What Jason is saying of mm -mm, you, you I called Mel Kuyper. I said I I felt like Mel Kuyper's argument. You thought was, I was speaking for Mel Kuyper? Well, you were saying what Mel Kuyper said. Gotcha. You were saying what he said, and I think what he said was just not as I'm honest to the film. Saying I'm in agreement of Jason that yeah, I I would have said Bryce Young. There's way too many people and way too many jobs on the line to say, well, we're just going to keep going with this one guy who after in week two was one of the most protected quarterbacks and still was awful. He was still awful. But I the preseason how the preseason has changed, where it used to be four games. Week three was always a dress, real dress, dress rehearsal. rehearsal for at least a half of football. And that happened. Uh, I believe the decision for that happened back in 2021. Uh, Kyle, please fact check me while I'm trying to remember this in real time. But what we do know is passing touchdowns through two weeks of the NFL have plummeted the past two years where – preseason has really changed for these players and and the first few weeks are now like kind of like the preseason so I'm that's what I'm saying I'm in agreement of both sides of I don't think I, I don't think that Bryce is fixable on the field right now you got to do it off the field but number two we got to it we got to get these guys some preseason action and I know it no one wants to see the it's it's when a guy gets injured in a preseason game a meaningless game you lose your mind we all do 
but we're getting bad you know what? offenses. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing is it's supposed to be injury prevention, but it's like, you know, is your body more capable of handling – a workload if you go work out in the gym or you, or you when you don't like if you go to the gym there's a chance that you hurt yourself in the gym yeah right there's a chance that you actually get injured lifting weights or doing something you know in the gym but if you don't go at all you're not prepared and i look i don't know that i don't have the data at the you know drop of a hat right now to say that there's less injuries more injuries i know that injuries are a monster storyline right now Sure. I know that every player, I mean, we're dealing with massive amounts of injuries on a yearly basis and not playing players because you think that that's preserving them, maybe hurting you competitively and it may be hurting you physically on the field. So it, it's interesting. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the most requested, the most talked about unsolved mystery of the current NFL season. Well, here we are again. <laughs> the most popular answer to the question of uh, what's the unsolved mystery you want an answer to? What has happened to the elite tight end? I mean, we this got, was the we, year it was supposed to be fixed. Everybody, yep. we 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 have Laporta freakouts, we have Kelsey freakouts, we have Andrews freakouts, Kincaid freakouts. Pitts is still I mean man I got out of that business but <laughs> you got the look, touchdown look I you know Kyle Pitts through two weeks is like 20 yards each week or something like that I mean you are not getting high tier upper echelon predictable results at the tight end position you're 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 at the point now through two weeks where I think if I had to put money on who ends the season as the number one fantasy tight end I would put my money on Brock Bowers I would put it down on Brock Bowers finishing number one, which guess what? That would be two straight years that a rookie did it. Sure. At number one. But look, that's it's really, really tough. But here's the data behind what's going on so far. In 2024, tight ends are less involved so far. So yards per route run, way down. Targets per route run, way down. So targeted yet less, and then when they are targeted, it's not down the field as and, much. And most importantly, even more importantly, is when they're in the red zone, the, the 10 zone. Where are the – I mean, that has always been when you're streaming a tight end, when a tight end has a good performance. That's it's always the Kyle Rudolph zone. Yeah, yeah, it's just the big tight end Rudolph goes, the red zone reindeer. Yeah, yes. you, you get touchdowns. And right now, there are just – there's no tight end touchdowns. What is happening? You you look at the percentage of red zone targets to tight ends over the years, um, you know, twenty nineteen through twenty twenty two, it was like twenty seven to thirty percent every year. We're at nineteen percent right now. That they're just not even getting the targets, let alone coming down with them. Only three tight ends have a touchdown inside the ten yard line so far. Yeah, George and only Kittle, one of them you would have played on your team. <laughs> yeah, Kittle, because Darnell two, Washington. Yeah siphon my Pat Fryermuth touchdown. And Foster Moreau uh, got involved in, in – was not started by fantasy players. So what is happening, Mike? Well, I mean, that that's the higher level look at it. But, you know, specifically looking at two elite players who have really disappointed, of uh, Sam Laporta and Travis Kelsey. I'll start with the good news. Sam Laporta still on the field a ton. He leads all tight ends in routes run. That's sensational. We we need our guys out there. He's run 15 total routes inside the red zone, but he's only had one target inside of that area. Last year, eight of his 10 touchdowns came inside the 20. So that's the good side of the Sam Laporta. And I'll start it by saying I do. Th I think Laporta is going to be fine over the course of the year. I do. Too. I still think he's a top five guy easily. But where where the conversation never went over the off season was we had the starting place of Sam Laporta was in the ultimate draft kit as a potential bust because of his ADP because last year he it was he was a touchdown monster but it was on such low volume that you knew that volume has to go up because that touchdown rate is just it's not sustainable from year to year to year you you can have a few years like that but to hit that touchdown mark on that amount of receptions every single year it's just it doesn't happen and so you transition that of, well, he's got to get more volume. And part of the argument against Jamison Williams was 
how does he pos- how can he break out if the target order is Amon right. Ra Amon Ra's safe, Jameer Gibbs is safe, and Sam Laporta is safe. How can But he was how, not safe. How can Jamison Williams fit in there in, instead of by kicking <laughs> by kicking in, Sam Laporta instead out instead of trying to flip that question on its head because it seemed impossible over the offseason of like well what if one of those guys gets booted out? And Jamison I, Williams takes that spot of target volume. Jamison Williams has 20 targets through two weeks. Sam Laporta has eight. Did, and That's uh, what happened. But I also think there's correlation between Jared Goff being the, yes. the dumpster fire yes. is because you're not targeting a – like you can call it overperforming in the red zone for Sam Laporta last yes. year. You can also call it proving that you're pretty good in the red zone for your team and getting the ball into the end zone. 20 targets for Jamison Williams – Eight for Sam Laporta through two weeks. I can't imagine what Kyle's going through emotionally with Jamison Williams starts of the year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Kyle, would you like to speak to that? Are you are you capable? He's good at football. I agree. Yeah. All right. Okay. You coward. All right. But point being, Sam Laporta is still out there running. Travis Kelsey, on the other hand, uh 13th in routes. Uh, like the, the that's not good enough. The Kansas City Chiefs are just through through two weeks, they're not passing very much. And so Travis Kelsey routes, just for an example, uh, twenty twenty three was thirty four routes a game, thirty five routes a game the year before, thirty eight. Like so, he's always been a mid thirty routes run. It's down at twenty seven right now, and that he is being asked to block a lot. He has not been the first read where. Uh, this is a courtesy of fantasy points. They track first read data. Mahomes looking at Travis Kelsey, where he's the first read in the target or in the in the play, twelve and a half percent. Guys currently with a higher percentage of first read targets: Brenton Strange, Jonu Smith, Austin Hooper, Hayden Hurst, Greg Dulcich. This is we are in a disaster zone here with Travis Kelsey. I, I would I would throw one other name in there with a higher first read. Target that's, that's that, gross. That is bad for Travis Kelsey. Xavier Worthy. Yes. So th- something is is very very different with the offense right now, and it's we thought, hey, Travis Kelsey, you know, over the the downside of drafting Travis Kelsey is you should get a great season, but maybe they're going to throttle back the snaps as they preserve him for the playoffs. They have not. Travis Kelsey is out Here's, there all the time right now. L- let me make this practical for fantasy players though, right now, because okay. Evan Ingram. Injured. David Njoku, injured. When you look at the actual landscape, this whole entire point of the Unsolved Mystery was that all the tight ends are struggling. So when you think about Kelsey struggling, but we also know what he's capable of. He also missed a touchdown by half a yard last week, which maybe it changes the way we look at sure. it. But let me ask you who you'd rather have of the list, of the short list of players somewhat performing at tight end. Obviously, we're all on the McBride over Kelsey. Yes. yes. We're probably all on the Bowers over Kelsey. Yes. yes. We're probably on the, all on the Kittle over Kelsey. Yes. yes. I think those are the three top tight ends right that now. That feels like maybe the – I mean, Lapor- the, Laporta and, over Kelsey. Yes, Laporta over okay. Kelsey. What about Mark Andrews? Probably. I think I'm Andrews over Kelsey, yeah. What about the, uh, the Kincaid uh, option? That feels to me like I'd pr- – they're, the they're the exact same tier, so if you want to take the – um, and, the history of Kelsey, I'm fine with that. And the the problem is, is that you can't. The, I mean, that's a short list, and you probably can't. You're not going to pivot Kelsey directly to one of those guys. The Bowers manager is not trading you him. No. for Travis Kelsey, you can try. You can try to do the Mark Andrews one. I, I mean, mean, because if, they're un- unhappy. If, but like Kittle, probably not. McBride, probably not. Like I would be shooting those out there. But otherwise, you're just sitting in Travis Kelsey right but now. The the upside narrative hope for Travis Kelsey is. That this offense has to change now. I mean, it, unless Carson Steele comes out and he is Isaiah Pacheco good on the ground, they're going to have to change and be a, a, a pass he- more pass heavy offense, which will then turn into more routes. And Travis Kelsey will almost certainly be more involved than he currently is. So that that's that's where everything is for me right now. That's like the if you have Travis Kelsey on your team, trying to look at what is the silver lining of the unfortunate situation that Pacheco is going to miss time, it could turn into more Travis Kelsey opportunities. All right. Well, this is definitely an unsolved mystery. We'll see what happens. Let's talk some Thursday night. 
Thursday Night Breakdown. I'm going to be honest with you. They've been advertising this game. My reaction to it hasn't been positive. I'm this, gonna be this honest is a good old-fashioned Thursday game. I've been thinking about having my pops over for Thursday night football, and I I thought about the upcoming game, and I was like, I'm going to wait a week. <laughs> I, don't yeah. know, I don't know what the next week is, but not super looking forward to this. But let's see if we can we can figure it out. New England is 1-1. One one. They take on the New York Jets, also 1-1. One one. The DK Sportsbook line, Jets minus 6.5. Over-under is 38.5. That gives the Patriots Blarf. 16 points. Blarf. Um. I mean, the the Jets' defense through two weeks does not look – like the Jets and the Cowboys' defenses through two weeks do not look like they looked to start last year. The Jets have lost some key defensive players. They just lost an edge rusher um, for the year in, in Johnson. You know, Mosley is hurt. Um, it, it, it's – but then on the other side is Jacoby Brissett dumping the ball to Hunter Henry to, to threaten you and really just handing the ball off to Ramondre. So – the they, implied point total here is 22 to 16. They need to hand the ball off 50 times in this game because the the way that these two teams match up against each other, the pass rush from the Jets and the offensive line for the Patriots, like I want to take the Patriots to cover here. I think this will be a closer game because the Patriots can win this game by running the ball, and the Jets don't have a great run defense. Even last year when they were number one against quarterbacks, number one against wide receivers, they were 28th against the running backs. You could run on them. And we saw that so far the first two weeks of this season, teams have had success. But I just feel like every single time Jacoby Brissett drops back to pass, he's going to be looking at stars. Like, this might be Drake May's first game uh, due to injury. I'm just like... Uh, I thought you were saying, like, Jalen Polk is already a superstar. No, I... Oh, nice. Uh, he, he's got some great behind-the-scenes metrics. But I do, th I do worry about the passing capability here for the Patriots at all. Against I mean, the Jets. The reason that I want to watch this football game is just to see if we see the evolution of Aaron Rodgers one more week into getting the ball to Garrett Wilson down the field. We get to watch Brees Hall. We get to see Braylon Allen and what his role um, looks like after people have probably picked him up 15 minutes ago in waivers. Um, that's that's my interest. Now, I, watching the Jets so far, to me, the consolidation of Wilson and Brees, and that's it. It's beautiful. Not for a football, for fantasy. Yeah, for fantasy you have predictability, but for football I don't know how sustainable that will be. But Ramondre and Brees are in your lineup. You're not starting another pass catcher in New England unless you're desperate for tight end play and you want to chase Hunter Henry, which I think I think you can do that if you've been dealing. Like Taysom Hill hit waiver wires on a lot of yeah. people's teams this week. So, look, it, it's tough in the tight end streets. Yeah, I don't blame anyone for – having to play Hunter Henry. I do not expect him to have a great game here against the Jets, but when you look at the process and you're like, okay, well, who am I picking up to play? Okay, I'll take the guy who had, you know, 75% of his team's yards last week, but this is not a great matchup for tight ends. Uh, where is Brees on the year? He's running back nine, believe it or not. That but feels low. It feels low. I was, I was taking a look at this. I mean, it, it's just been so much passing game work for Brees Hall. He is on pace through two weeks to catch 102 passes. And we were wondering if that would continue because that was kind of the, we don't know what to do, so we're just right. going to throw it to Brees last year. It also seems like that time mm -hmm. to throw for Aaron Rodgers is directly correlative to, it is. ah, Brees. Ah, Brees. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if that continues, but it seems as of right now that it will. Yeah, I mean, this game is 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 pretty easy. It you've is. Got, you've got three guys that you know you want to start in Brees, Garrett Wilson, and Ramondre, and there's really no one else you want to start. I don't want to start Rodgers. I don't want to start Hunter Henry, and that's that's it. I yeah. mean, Jets wide receivers, check Al out. Alan Lazard, shockingly came crashing down to earth in week two. Uh, it is Part of that is Mike Williams is on the rise, but right now I think we have their – their crossing paths are just kind of taking away from each they're, other. They're dart throw touchdown guys that will probably disappoint you if there's nothing else. And it's um, the big question here: What if Garrett Wilson has a bad game? I think that he is going to have a subpar game. So, at what point do what we start the, blaming Garrett Wilson? Soon, 
because it, we're we're years into the career of yeah. how much potential he has and how good he is. It's just not getting it done. You know what he and, finished last year? Wide like receiver 32. 30, yeah. You know what he's been both of the first two weeks? Can Third, I guess 33 32? and 33. Oh. So, yeah, this is a the Drake London Garrett Wilson Hope Fest. Yeah. That the parade of hope that we've had every offseason. Yeah, it's going to start to wear thin because you the that's the worst player you can have is the one that you think you have to start every week that doesn't give you the numbers you ever want. It's what McLaurin and DJ Moore were for years. And we saw it, And it makes me sad. We saw JSN last week have a really good week against the Patriots. DK Metcalf had a really good week against the Patriots. So um, it's just a matter of can Nathaniel Hackett you get Garrett Wilson to opportunities that are you know plus because th this is still a good defense for the Patriots. Yeah, and they, it's also not a game that you expect to be really – like it's a he they're heavy favorites. If you don't get Garrett Wilson involved in the first half, you might not see a lot of him in the second half. And I'm still playing Garrett this week. Of like the, the Patriots right now 26th against fantasy wide receivers giving up over 30 points a game to the position. So they're, they're it, this isn't a disaster, like a, a, a scheduled disaster for Garrett Wilson. It just, I don't know that Rodgers is, is ready yet. The, uh, this is a, a depressing stat, but Garrett Wilson has five games of 15 plus fantasy points in 36 career games. You know who else has five, uh, total games of 15 plus in that time frame? K.J. Osborne, Darius Slayton, and Hunter Renfro. Yeah, moment of silence for that. All right. Uh, one quick reminder. It's Waiver Wednesday, which means drop it like it's hot. Yes. Because what do we mean? We mean that check your waiver wire for all the players that were dropped so that other people could add the players that were hot this week. So keep your eyes on that. There, there's Last week we saw Gus Edwards in our League of Record go to that waiver wire. I mean, the, this is going to happen and you need to pay attention to it. So just browse uh, the players that hit the waiver wire, not just the ones that went on to teams. Look for stupid. <laughs> yeah, look for it, take advantage of it, and that'll do it for today. Matchups start tomorrow, including our starts of the week for week three, gentlemen. All right, we'll catch you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.